Hey guys, Tyrep here. And as you can see, the in-game store has 75% off everything, including commanders. So I figured this would be a good time to update my commanders buying guide. Now note that this is a buying guide, not a tier list. Quite a lot of the best commanders are the ones that you can get by default. So uh, I won't be covering them in this video. Also do note that you can uh, register your email with Relic. If you haven't done so so far, I believe you can do it in the options menu. I can't demonstrate it because I did it ages ago. But yeah, you can register your email with Relic and that will get you uh, 30,000 of these supply coins and that will be enough to get you uh, two commanders. So, you know, if you don't want to spend some cash, maybe you'll be able to get two commanders for free by registering your email. So I'm going to be going through the factions as they appear here from left to right and then going through the commanders from top to bottom. Starting out here, we have Advanced Warfare Tactics. This is a moderate commander, radio intercepts good, T3485 is good, PPSH is I like, but a generally kind of moderate, conscript repair also moderate, and the IL-2 Sturmvik attacks in this commander is terrible, one of the worst abilities in the game. So this is an okay commander, but certainly not a must buy. Anti-infantry tactics, KV-8 is good, shock troops good, recon plane medium, fear propaganda artillery quite bad, and incendiary artillery quite good. But overall, the mix of abilities in this commander doesn't really lend itself to being that strong. So it's decent, but I'll probably even put this below uh, Advanced Warfare. Not really a must-buy. Armored Assault Tactics. Radio Incept, good. T-3485, good. Vehicle Crew Repair Training, pretty good. This allows your tanks to repair themselves when they're out of combat. Cost munitions. R2 Sturmvik Attacks. This is different to the one in Advanced Warfare. This one is actually really good. The other one's a stinker. This is the Loiter, so... Two planes fly around looking for targets, anti-infantry uh, planes, these ones. And do some pretty good damage, so this is good. More good in uh, the small team modes, 1, 1v1 and 2v2. In the bigger team modes, the planes tend to get shot down quite quickly. And then finally the IS-2, which is decent. One of the better heavy tanks at the moment, but heavy tanks are kind of on the out. So this has long time been like absolutely one of the top tier commanders, but... With the IS-2 being a little bit lackluster at the moment, uh, it's a medium pick. Conscript Support Tactics has the KV-1, which is good. PPSH Conscripts, which are medium. Conscript Repair Kit, medium. Rapid Conscription, bad. And Incendiary Artillery, good. I feel like the abilities in this commander actually synergize quite well, but it's certainly not a top tier pick, so even though I enjoy playing it, certainly not a must buy. Here we have Counter Attack Tactics with the KV-1, which is good. Shock Troops, good. Recon Overflight. Very good in this command specifically because you, as you can see there at the bottom is the B4 howitzer. This is like the big daddy howitzer shoots a huge shell can one shot a Panzer IV if it lands but it's kind of wayward so having the recon plane up can help you spot targets, land more accurate shots and then finally you have Four Mother Russia which allows your infantry to sprint around the map when they're out of combat also gives them some combat bonuses quite good for just you know maybe getting out of your base charging in going for some big flanks, stuff like that. So overall, this commander is pretty good, probably most valuable if you want to meme around with the B4, but quite often those B4s don't last too long in uh, big team game modes, as well as recon planes, bombing runs, so they get killed quite quickly. Defensive tactics, Dishka, which is good. Heavy mortar team, which is not very good. M42, 45mm AT gun, this is like a mini AT gun, good at countering light vehicles. Uh, quite popular in 1v1 tournament matches at the moment. You might see like two or three of them even in a match. Quite effective at yeah, shutting down light vehicles which are very powerful in 1v1. Advanced fortifications, which are okay. Don't really see too much play. Probably I'd put that on the bad side. And the anti-tank overwatch artillery, which is a just really, really strong. Which even makes this commander viable in big team modes. Just like this big artillery strike covers a pretty decent area. Targets tanks very strong area denial and a lot of damage potential especially if a tank's got a damaged engine in the area it can take a lot of damage from that ability very very strong so overall this makes this commander quite strong especially in 1v1 this is one of the strongest commanders you've seen as i said in the tournament games but also a decent pick for team games largely because of the anti-tank overwatch lend lease we have the m4c shim which is pretty good dishka which is good M5 Half-Track Assault Group, which is kind of good, but it arrives at a slightly awkward timing, kind of hard to fit into your build. Allied Supply Drop, this drops in some fuel, but it has a very high chance of getting shot down, so 
in basically any mode but 1v1 and 2v2 in the early game, plane's probably going to get shot down in 3v3 and 4v4, you can just forget about it. Almost never going to land this, so it's going to get shot down. And then Conscript Repair Kit, which is kind of medium, so I wouldn't really recommend buying this commander. Mechanized support, this one has camouflage for your anti-tank guns, which is good. Helps them spring ambushes and avoid artillery strikes. Guard rifle infantry, which are very good. Mark vehicle, very good. R2 bombing strike, versatile, good against vehicles if you're going to mobilize them. Good against howitzers, stationary targets. And then the ISU 152, which is just an absolute weapon, really, really strong, especially in team games. 1v1, kind of hard to fit into your build. But yeah, in team games, this thing's a monster, one of the strongest units in the game. And that overall makes this the best Soviet commander for team games. You see it on almost every team game. It's very, very strong. So if you're playing team games, this is a must buy. Powers and tactics with ready inset, which is good. Powers and troops, which can be deployed from buildings, which can be used for like easy flanks. You can just deploy it from a building right behind your enemy. Maybe get the wipe on their weapon team, maybe steal the weapon team after that. That's their main purpose, I would say, in terms of actual like straight up combat. They're not that useful. Kind of similar story for the partisan tank hunters. They have a Panzer Shrek. They can shoot at vehicles. So kind of useful that maybe getting the last hit off on an opposing light vehicle or tank. You can deploy them like that, but they're okay. You know, they do have camouflage. You can kind of spring an ambush, say T-grenade Shrek, but it's, yeah, not, not amazing. <laughs> Spy network. Now, this is the real strength of the commander. Just maybe even OP it allows you to see like every opposing unit on the tactical map or mini map, like kind of in the fog. So if you open up the tactical map, you can see them, which is really helpful for targeting things like Katusha barrages or rocket artillery strikes. Maybe even for your teammates, you can like ping where they should strike. So I think that's like the strength of this commander. Maybe in team games, helping to target your rocket artillery strikes. And then finally, Mark Vehicle, which is good, especially at taking down the big heavy tanks. So yeah, I'd say this is a decent pick for team games. If you want to get those easy flanks, easy steal on the weapon teams, scam out some kills on tanks, target your rocket artillery very easily with the spy network, and a bit of Mark Vehicle action to help take down the big Axis tanks, which makes this a decent overall buy, especially for team games. Shock Motor Heavy, we have shock troops, which are good. Armored Vehicle Detection, which is quite bad. Conscript Repair Kit, which is medium, R2 Bombing Strike, which is good, and 152, which is good. But overall, this commander is massively overshadowed by uh, mechanized support, which is kind of just like this, but better. Sure, on this command, you have shock troops and sear guards, which can be kind of nice, but yeah, you're missing out on the marked vehicle, you're missing out on the AT camouflage, so yeah, this is kind of just mechanized support, but worse. Soviet industry, we have the KV-8, which is good. Repair stations, you can build these up, they cost uh, manpower and munitions, and then every time you back your vehicle towards them, they will automatically start repairing it. So I'd say that's more of like a team game oriented thing, so your allies can also take advantage of uh, the repairs from them. Supply drop, as I said, this is very hard to use in team games, especially as the game wears on, there's just so much anti-air. So you might be able to get one or two drops off early, but yeah, can't really rely on this in the late game, those planes get shot down very easily and you won't get the bonus fuel. Vehicle crew repair training, kind of overlapping a bit with the repair stations here, so the synergy in this commander is maybe not so good in that department. But then there's the KV-2, which is just a real weapon. Possibly like the best call in heavy tank at the moment. It's just a very versatile, big AOE on its gun, kind of slow firing, but once it gets VET-2, gets a bonus range, very, very strong. So overall, this commander may be more of a team game oriented commander. Slightly more angled towards the late game, but yeah, not really a must buy. It's a decent option. Tank Hunter Tactics, Conscript PTRS Package. This is kind of what the whole commander is based around. Conscripts get a whole bunch of PTRSs, which make them uh, quite good against vehicles. They also get access to a special uh, anti-tank grenade, which is basically like one of each model of the Conscript Squad throws an AT grenade, which has slightly longer range than a regular snare. But but if the vehicle gets out of range during the time that they're throwing, it kind of cancels it. So it makes it a little bit awkward to use. Conscripts also get uh, camouflage, so you can kind of spring ambushes with them, but it can be hard to set up. So, and also, once they have these PTRSs equipped, they do terrible against infantry. They can just barely even scratch them. 
So yeah, it makes them weak against infantry, but quite strong against vehicles. However, it's generally just not that good. Maybe a bit more of a meme. PMD6M anti-vehicle mines. These are also quite bad. Same mines that uh, re echelon get for US forces, but conscripts can plant them. So yeah, that is, uh, they're okay, but it's not really worth a whole commander slide, I don't think. Tank hunter ambush tactics. This allows your tank to kind of go camouflage in place, so you can spring some ambushes with them. But yeah, it's just uh, not that strong. <laughs> ML20 howitzer. It's an okay howitzer, but howitzers are generally not that strong. Quite often they'll get bombed out. So yeah, it's it's okay, but nothing special. And then the IL-2 PTAB anti-tank bombing run. This is probably the strength of the commander. Big uh, area, drops a whole bunch of bombs, can stun vehicles, does quite a lot of damage to vehicles and buildings. It's probably the main purpose of it, I would say, is uh, taking down an OKW tech truck. Maybe come in, get a couple shots off, drop the bombing run. I've won many a game thanks to that. But yeah, overall this commander, a bit more of a meme buy. So if you want a meme with the Dank Hunters, pick it up, but not a serious purchase. Terror Tactics, we've got the KV-8, which is good. And shock troops which are good but fair propaganda artillery which is bad ml20 which is medium and r2 bombing strike which is good you can kind of just get these units in uh, slightly different configurations and maybe some more appealing commanders so this is an okay commander but certainly not top tier you don't have to buy it urban defense tactics we have the forward headquarters so what this does is you can uh, run a squad into a building and then convert that into a forward headquarters you can also build the headquarters as well and then once it's converted you can reinforce and there's a whole bunch of medics standing around so you can heal there and I think there's a combat bonus from it as well. Not too sure if that's still uh, removed or maybe you have to activate it these days. Can't remember exactly. But yeah, if you can do this in team games on like a big stone building which is very hard to kill in the early game, it can lead to a lot of map control. It can be really strong and really hard to counter in the early game. M42 Light AT gun. Good at dealing with light vehicles especially, quite strong in 1v1s at the moment. Shock troops, strong. Booby trap territory, not so good, but it's okay, not horrible. And then KV-2 heavy tank, that is a weapon, really, really strong. So overall, this is a pretty good commander. Good for team games, for scamming wins with the Ford headquarters. Good for 1v1s with the M42 shock troops and KV-2. Overall, pretty good commander. Definitely worth considering buying. Moving on to the Aussie commanders, we have Assault Support Doctrine. Starting out, we have the Artillery Field Officer. So this guy, uh, five-man squad, equipped with MP40 submachine guns, so decent close range, but not incredible. Will be out DPS by other close range specialists, but has some utility. Can call in smoke, can call in a heavy mortar strike, which is quite good, and can get your like other artillery pieces to fire again. So you can like fire your Panzerwerfer twice in a row almost, which is pretty strong. So it can be a little bit hard to use, kind of comes in a little bit late to be effective as a raw combat squad, but can have some strong utility. Decent option, especially if you want to put the time into getting good with him. Cargo truck. So this is a light vehicle, unarmed, and you can drive it onto a territory point and it'll double, and you set it up and it'll double the resources you get from it. So maybe something you want to look into uh, after you've built your caches if you're on team games, because the resources that the Opal Blitz gives only come to you, not to your teammates. And maybe slightly more viable, in team games, when you're really trying to just rush out fuel, but don't be one of those people who just builds caches and trucks and doesn't help in combat at all. Please, don't be one of those people. Maybe in 1v1s as well, it might be slightly more viable than building a cache because you can move it around, keep it safe from the opponent, slightly less likely to kill it, but yeah. Overall, not super useful. Strafing run. This one, probably better in 1v1s and 2v2s when there's not as much anti-air. It's basically like one plane that loiters around, comes through, does a lot of suppression, pins squads, but not very much damage. So quite good uh, as you're making assault, making a push, pop it down, pins all the infantry, you can get a lot of damage done while they are helpless lying on the ground, unable to do anything. So it's an okay ability, but quite likely to get shot down. Fragmentation bombs, this is quite strong. Plane comes through, drops a whole bunch of bombs, just wipes infantry really strong. Decent against tanks as well, doesn't do heaps of damage to tanks, but stuns them in place. Quite strong against like howitzers as well. Strong ability. And then finally the Tiger tank. Got nerfed quite badly in the last round of nerfs. It's still an okay option, but not incredible. And uh, maybe best for like beginner players, players who don't have uh, good enough control 
to micro like three or four tanks at once, being able to just like getting one tank, supporting it well, maybe teaming up with some rocket artillery with the artillery field officer can be quite strong rather than having to try and control like four medium tanks at once. Tiger can still be a decent option, but not incredible. So overall, this commander is an okay choice, but not top tier. Defensive, one of the most popular commanders in 1v1 at the moment because it gives you access to the Ostrupen squad. These are six-man squads, quite durable, and you can start fielding them almost straight away. As you hit the battlefield really early on, you don't have to build your tech structure to build your grenadiers. You can just start calling in the Ostrupen, which allows you hit the map fast, get a lot of map control early, which can be really, really strong. They're decent in fighting, quite durable. Not incredible, but decent. Defensive fortifications, building sandbags for your Ostrupen will be quite helpful. Trenches, not so good, but whatever. Strugi, which is okay. It's got quite long range, 50 range anti-infantry, but its projectile is quite slow, so it's kind of easy to dodge it. Doesn't do heaps of da damage. It's got quite good AoE, but yeah, the damage per hit's quite low. So I wouldn't plan to build one of these, but sometimes you know, maybe you can call in two of them, get you out of a bind, but it's a slippery slope because, yeah, they can sometimes drop off quite badly. They're not terribly good, but it's okay. Pack 43 can be hard to utilize this, you know, quite vulnerable to bombing strikes and whatnot, but it can also catch your opponents off guard and knock out a tank very, very quickly. Heaps of damage and shoot through buildings very strong if you can find the opportunity to put it down. Sector artillery. You call this in on a sector and then that sector and its adjacent ones that are connected, friendly territory only, will start to have like lots of bombs dropped on them if the opponents are in them. So yeah, it's kind of hard to use this effectively because you call it in and the opponents can just pull back most of the time. So it doesn't end up doing very much damage, but it can be devastating. If the opponents stay in there, this thing will hammer them down. But yeah, it can be hard to use because they can just get out of there. So yeah, overall this commander does see quite a lot of play, especially in 1v1s, but it's largely just because of the Ostrupen. So yeah, if you're a 1v1 player, it might be worth picking it up. Elite Troops, we have the stun grenades here. So these are like a super low damage grenade. I think they do like 5 damage, very little damage. But yeah, if they land on an enemy squad, it will stun them in place. The only movement they can do for a couple seconds is retreat, and they can't fire back at you as well. So yeah, they, they're... They're quite cheap, but they don't do that much damage. They can just, you know, be a little bit of icing on the cake. Maybe stop something from charging into you or stunning something in place briefly. Help you win the engagement. And yeah, because they're cheap, you can kind of spam them out. Yeah, you can like infantry upgrade. This gives you access to G43s on your Grenadiers, Stormtroopers and uh, Panzer Grenadiers. For Grenadiers, I don't think they're terribly strong. There is an okay timing window for them uh, against Soviets before... Soviets get any uh, upgrades on the conscripts. This can allow your grenadiers to perform quite well against them. So G43s are really good at firing on the move. So good for run and gun strategies. Like if you want to get aggressive, jump on top of team weapons, flanks, do all sorts of stuff like that. But yeah, maybe not so good against uh, Brits or US forces where double Brent infantry sections, double bar riflemen will chop you up quite badly. But they're stronger on uh, Panzer Grenadiers and Stormtroopers. They get like elite G43s with three G43s. And those do scale quite well into the late game, even against uh, Brits and US forces. So it's a decent option, but yeah, I'd say generally probably not the good on uh, Grenadiers. Stormtroopers, this is an infiltration unit. You can spawn them out of a building. They're decently strong. They come equipped straight out of the building with uh, Khan and the Axe, but you can upgrade them for free with MP40s. And that's kind of the secret to them. They've got really good close range damage. They've got camouflage, so you can uh, spring ambushes. Or you can upgrade them with the G43s, and uh, they're quite strong, just all rounders. You can also upgrade them with the Panzer Shrek, but uh, that doesn't see too much action. As a tactician, one of the best abilities in the game, just smoke your tanks, get them out of danger, it helps them stay alive so much more easily. Really, really strong. And the Tiger Ace, this is kind of like a super tiger, has uh, more health. Has uh, access to some special abilities such as spearhead, does it like more sight, suppression, uh, it's machine gun, uh, repair. And when it's out of combat, it can repair itself, cost munitions. But yeah, it's quite strong, but it can be hard to access. You have to tech quite far up the tech tree to get it, and it's quite expensive. So it's a decent, decent tank, but yeah, 
quite hard to access. So overall this commander is it's decently strong but not an absolute top tier pick in uh, any game mode. In Circumit, this is one of the top meme commanders. And it's all based on close the pocket. This is like basically the most powerful artillery strike in the whole game. Basically in any cutoff territory, it just starts dropping crazy bombs on the opponents that are in there. Just outrageous amounts of artillery gets hammered in that area. So it can be quite hard to execute this, getting the cutoffs going. Making sure the opponents are actually in the cutoff area can be hard to uh, achieve, but boy, do you get rewarded. It's crazy. So, to help you achieve that, you have the stormtroopers. Infiltration units can help you maybe neutralize some territory, break supply line, neutralize the territory point, and breakthrough gives your vehicles a speed boon bonus and they can neutralize territory. So, you've got a lot of things to try and uh, enable close to pocket, but still quite hard to do and uh, quite expensive. So yeah, high risk, high reward, top meme commander, but not very good overall. Fortified armor, this is a good commander overall, but uh, massively overshadowed by Jaeger armor, which you get free with the game. So I wouldn't say this is an essential buy, but if you're looking for another commander with an elephant, it's okay. Jaeger infantry, I feel like this is one of the best commanders, like regardless of the mode, 1v1 through to 4v4. This has a really good mix of abilities, quite munitions intensive, but yeah, just... I really, really like it. Got the ambush camo, which is strong. G43's already covered that. Jaeger Command Squad. This is kind of like a five-man grenadier with G43's. It's flares, a lot of abilities. Quite a strong unit all around. A lot of utility on that. Light artillery barrage, really good at clearing out team weapons. And of course, Stu Collins Air Support, really strong at giving the uh, finishing blow a bit of extra momentum against the opponent's tanks. They don't get shot down, yeah, really, really strong. Good overall commander, definitely worth buying. Joint operations, this is a good commander if you want to play against like AI on a bridge map, something like that, but doesn't really have a place in uh, multiplayer. Lightning War, this has been one of the top commanders for quite a long time, but at the moment doesn't see too much play. But the G43s, which are good. Tactical movement, which is basically like a sprint for all your infantry, except for and tank guns, which is uh, pretty good for repositioning. So it doesn't see too much play even when this commander is uh, used because most of the time you're trying to save your munitions with the Stuka close air support. Relief infantry which is pretty awful at the moment honestly. And the Tiger tank as I covered earlier it's kind of medium decent pick. So yeah this has been for a long time one of the strongest commanders and if the Tiger gets buffed in the future it will be good but at the moment it's a medium pick. Luftwaffe supply you can do some meme strategies with this where you maybe like feed resources to one of your teammates help them push out a vehicle really really quickly but overall this commander is not very good wouldn't recommend getting it mechanized assault we have the assault grenadiers which are good especially against soviets and on the right map they can just be really really hard to deal with so you see a decent amount of these in uh, 1v1 tournament play mechanized assault group this is also quite good can arrive a little bit late in team games when command points tend to accumulate a little bit more slowly but really good at chasing down squads on retreat and getting the wipes Quite powerful. Struggy, not so good, but maybe can get you out of a bind in a desperate scenario. Light artillery brush, really strong, call it in on team weapons. And then the Tiger tank, decent. But yeah, overall, the real strength of this is like the early game with the assault grenadiers and then the light artillery brush help you clear up team weapons. Strong commander, worth buying. Mobile defense, this is kind of all hinged on the uh, Puma at the moment. Kind of comes in a little bit late, hard to access. Yeah, not really uh, worth buying this commander. Mobile Defense used to be one of the most popular 1v1 commanders because of the Puma, but now the Puma comes a lot later, harder to access. And yeah, in the meta game at the moment, it's not very good, so do not recommend buying this one. Ostrupin, arguably the strongest commander in 1v1 at the moment. So yeah, if you want to play 1v1, buy this commander. Spearhead, pretty decent commander overall. Got the Mortar Half Track, which is quite good at burning down British emplacements. Has like an incendiary barrage. Pants Tactician, get out a jail free card for your tanks. Recon Flight, which can be decent, but you're probably going to be saving your munitions for the Fragmentation Bombing Run, which is really good. And then you've got the Tiger at the top. So I'd say this is slightly more oriented towards the uh, like team games, if you want to use a Tiger. And maybe, you know, they've got anti-air, or you're worried about them having anti-air and your Lightning War planes are going to get shot down. This one a bit more reliable in that department. Pants Tactician, going to help you keep your Tiger alive. Maybe, like... Mechanized Assault is more of like a 1v1 kind of Tiger Commander. It's 
spearhead more of like a team game, Tiger Commander. So yeah, if you want to play with a Tiger in a team game, this is probably the one for you. And finally Storm, I probably wouldn't bother getting this one. Moving on to US Forces, we've got Heavy Cavalry Company. Rifleman Field Defenses allows you to build mines and sandbags with your Rifleman. So this is really handy for holding onto territory, maybe protecting your ambulance against a base assault, stuff like that. If you've got the micro to put these down, it's really, really good. Off-map Smoke Barrage, this is just smoke comes down reasonably fast, maybe a little bit expensive for what it does, but it's decent. It can help with flanks, stuff like that, or frontal assaults. Rangers, a strong all-round elite infantry squad. You can equip them with SMGs, which makes them strong close range. They've got a good grenade, good for assaults. Or, most recently, they've got access to the elite bazookas. So you can equip them with three bazookas, which do more than regular bazookas. They've got more damage and more penetration, which makes them really strong as an anti-tank squad. Seeing so they'd be quite effective in like 4v4s, especially 1v1s and 2v2s can be kind of hard to use them, they kind of often get suppressed, hard to get in range. But yeah, I've seen them be quite strong in the uh, bigger team modes with the bazookas. Combined arms is a strong ability. If you've got like tanks and infantry next to each other, they kind of buff each other. Can lead to some like really like rapid fire on your tanks. Can be really strong for making a big assault. And finally, the M26 Pershing Heavy Tank. It's decent, maybe more anti-infantry focused compared to like the IS-2 and the Tiger but also a bit more fragile, kind of makes it harder to use in 3v3 and 4v4, can go down quite quickly. So yeah, nothing special, not really worth uh, picking the commander for overall, but it's a solid commander, not a must-buy though for any mode. Mechanized Company, this is probably the strongest commander for 1v1 at the moment. You've got Reserve Armor, this gives you access to the Dozer Blade upgrade on your Sherman. Gives it bonus health, bonus armor, ability to build barriers, which can be quite helpful for putting your squads behind building heavy cover for them. So that's quite strong. Also gives you access to the 76mm Sherman, which is strong. There's like a good mix of stats, which makes it quite effective at fighting Axis medium tanks, especially like on the move. So yeah, if you're dueling against Austria Panzer IVs and stuff like that, 76mm Sherman can be quite a strong option, though not quite as strong against infantry as the regular Sherman. You also get access to the WC-51. That's the real like powerhouse of this commander. Really strong in the early game. It's like a mobile light vehicle. It's a really good DPS for the early game once it's upgraded with the heavy machine gun. Long range, highly mobile, can cap territory. It's really, really busted strong in the early game, which is why it's so popular in 1v1. And you can also get access to the M3 Assault Half Track which you can put like two bazooka uh, rear echelon or something like that inside, which can be actually quite effective against like all armor targets. Surprisingly effective once you've got the uh, speed bonus on it. So uh, look up some Twisted Tootsie games if you want to check that out. Mortar half track, it's okay, nothing special. Can be an easy way to get some white phosphorus out. Can be okay in like 1v1s dealing with team weapons. It's quite mobile, which makes it... Uh, Quite good at like quickly repositioning from uh, target to target compared to just a regular mortar but often not really worth the uh, fuel cost slowing down your progress towards medium tanks and the such so yeah it's okay but nothing special cavalry riflemen these are a strong close range squad and can be made even stronger with an upgrade they can get two thompsons quite strong if you can put them in the wc-51 good at like chasing down squads getting wipes on retreat and overall just a decent squad and finally, Combined Arms, as I said with the Heavy Cav Review, quite a strong ability, and especially with the 76mm Shermans in this commander, man, they can fire super quickly with this activated. That's really the strength of this ability in this commander. Recon Support, probably the second most popular USF commander in 1v1s, but Raid Tactics doesn't see too much action, but can lead you to uh, capture territory really quickly. Line our Pathfinders, which are really strong, have super long line of sight, can call in this artillery which arrives really quickly, super hard to dodge with team weapons, kind of busted actually. But yeah, they are quite vulnerable to light vehicles in the early game, but overall a really strong option and can lead to some diverse builds in the early game, help you avoid opposing machine guns with their long line of sight, so that's a real benefit for the Pathfinders. Airdrop Combat Group, this is like really good value for money. Your paratroopers and a pack out, so for a low, low price, and this can lead to a big power spike, especially if you don't want to go captain, you can go lieutenant, 
but still get access to the pack how it's a really really strong inmate greyhound this arrives maybe a little bit late for team games with the command point timing but still a strong option for 1v1 as good anti-infantry especially once upgraded with the extra machine gun and uh, has really good line of sight which makes it quite easy to position it out maneuver anti-tank guns and yeah that's that's mainly it just makes positioning of the greyhound really really strong so yeah it's, it's worse against light vehicles than the Stuart, but better against infantry and its long line of sight makes it really easy to use m83 cluster bombs so this is like a big aoe somewhat low damage artillery strike plane comes through drops the bombs down really good at wiping infantry uh does okay ish damage to tanks but will slow them down as well if they get hit by it but yeah covers a large area arrives relatively quickly can make it hard to dodge combined with its large area of effect so yeah pretty strong uh off map ability rifle company we have the easy eight sherman this is okay but not incredible not really my favorite uh it has extra health and armor compared to the regular sherman more penetration as well and that makes it quite strong dueling axis medium tanks but yeah it's quite expensive not that strong against infantry kind of hard to find its place i generally find it's more effective to go for like a sherman put it on he and a jackson rather than two easy eights but yeah it does have its place but yeah, taking up a whole commander slot i don't know it's it's not not that special rough on field defenses which is strong advanced infantry equipment so this gives you flamethrowers on your rear echelon which can be strong on some maps but generally you don't want to go for two rear echelon squads one for sweepers one for flamers because it can make you a little bit weak in the early game so yeah some maps it can be quite good but others are maybe a bit lackluster. Also gives you flares on your rifle, which can be helpful for you know, spotting team weapons before you make your assault, deciding how you want to attack, or maybe spotting for your indirect fire can be a decent option. Fire up, basically like a sprint for riflemen, which is uh, decent. And finally, white phosphorus smoke barrage covers a medium area, not that big with white phosphorus, which is pretty strong against infantry. But yeah, for its cost, I feel like this isn't that good. Maybe could do with a slight cost reduction. And overall, I'm not really a big fan of Rifle Company. Though I know that some players are. Certainly not top tier though in any game mode. Tactical Support Company. This is probably my favorite commander for 1v1s. Got the M5 half track. Arrives a little bit late at three command points. But does enable you to go for like a double officer build. You can go lieutenant and captain. Don't have to tick the extra tick stage. And you can still get major by going for a double officer build like that. Double officers also speed up your command points. Now you get this out a little bit earlier. So there's a couple of secrets for the tactical support build. But yeah, this is generally quite strong against Osea specifically. Good uh, against the 2 2 Good at suppressing all their units. Arriving at the later timing. It's not too big of a deal. But yeah, more of a 1v1 thing if you want to use it strictly in combat also very strong in anti-air role against okw not so good because they generally counter up with the looks of the puma but yeah there you go m1919 lmgs these are really strong this means that you kind of don't need to tick weapon racks you can just pick up the m1919s also kind of helps you afford the double officer build in the early game as well by not having to tick weapon racks and these are really really strong this commander compared to infantry company you don't get access to rifleman sandbags so it makes them a little bit hard to use but Still really, really strong. I like the M1919 Rifleman a lot. P47 Recon Run. This is actually different to like the Soviet and Aussie Recon Runs. This one covers an enormous area of the map. You can see so much, which is really helpful for targeting your Calliope barrages, which you can see at the bottom. You've got access to the Calliope, which is a real weapon, probably best rocket artillery in the game. And allows your Jacksons to fire at their maximum range, out of range of the enemy counter fire, Makes it really easy to position your Jacksons and use them effectively. It's just such a strong ability, especially even 1v1s, where it's not that likely that the planes are going to get shot down. P47 strafing run. This is kind of weak, especially for its cost. Comes in somewhat quickly. Can wipe infantry and team weapons sometimes. A little bit RNG and how it goes. Quite effective at pinning, but yeah, not that strong for its cost. And then yeah, the Calliope, just a real weapon. Best rocket artillery in the game in my opinion really strong at wiping you can drive it in close get the wipes are at long range still decent 
very, very strong. So yeah, this is my personal favorite commando in 1v1s, but also a decent option in team games. Uh, M1919's Calliope Recon Run, just a solid all-round commander, but yeah, doesn't see too much play from uh, <laughs> most other players, but I think it's really good. Moving on to OKW, we've got the Elite Armored Commander, the 221, maybe like a slightly weak light vehicle in the early game, but can open up some different build orders, which is quite fun. And later on in the game, you can upgrade it to 223, which can give you boosted resources when you set up on a territory point, which can be quite helpful for speeding up progress towards the tank. Emergency repairs, this is a good ability. Heals 400 health from a tank, so not a full heal, but a decent chunk, and will remove uh, criticals. So pretty helpful. You can kind of just spam this and keep your tanks on the battlefield healthy. Heat shells, these are probably the highlight of the commander, really strong. When you activate them, they give your tanks bonus penetration and damage, makes them super strong at dueling enemy tanks. Just really, really strong, especially on the Yagpan, so this is a weapon with the heat shells, really strong ability. Stern Tiger, this is more of a meme. After a delay, you shoot this huge rocket, which can almost one-shot a medium tank, but yeah, kind of hard. The opponent has to be asleep at the wheel for it to really land on them. But yeah, it's, it's a meme, but uh, it's not that good. Finally, the Panzer Commander upgrade. You can put this on your tanks, such as Panzer IV, Panther, King Tiger. Uh, quite a strong option. Gives you bonus sight. Uh, gives you the ability to call in an off-map artillery strike. Quite a popular option on the King Tiger. It's uh, quite a good ability. Overall, this commander is quite strong. And uh, I would recommend buying it. I do quite enjoy it. And it is overall quite strong from 1v1 to 4v4. Firestorm. Starting out, we've got the Hetzer. So this is a uh, flame tank. Doesn't have a turret though. Can only shoot straight ahead. Does like pretty damn good DPS, but can be hard to keep it alive. Kind of arrives at an awkward timing when your opponent's probably going to have medium tanks themselves, which can, you know, it's helpless against. So it can be a bit awkward to use, but uh, actually pretty good if you use it correctly. Salt package, this allows you to get stern pyres with flamethrowers, can be really helpful on maps with a lot of buildings. Can enable you to go for like double stern pyre builds, which is quite strong. And fox grenadiers with the MP40s, makes them into a strong close range squad. Not super strong, we'll still lose to like elite infantry squads. Also switches out the incendiary grenade for a high explosive grenade and smoke grenade. Can be helpful in countering team weapons with the smoke, catch your opponents off guard with HT grenades. Decent, but uh, not incredible. Incendiary munitions, infantry support guns can shoot like a flame barrage. Good at countering uh, emplacements for the Brits, but otherwise it's not incredible. It's okay. Opal Blitz truck, this is different to the RC one. This one you can use as a troop transport. You can put two squads inside it, carry them around. Infantry nearby get a slight combat bonus when it's uh, out on the battlefield and also uh, can be used for healing. So quite popular for players to go mechanized truck and then get the Opal Blitz for the healing and use it as an ambulance in their base. So that's probably the highlight of this commander. It does see a little bit of play in 1v1 largely because of the Opal Blitz for the healing. And finally Rocket Barrage. This is kind of like a whole bunch of walking Stuka rockets that arrive in a circle rather than in a line. Can be decent at countering uh, static emplacements, howitzers, stuff like that, British emplacements. But yeah, do arrive somewhat slowly, can be hard to land on an opponent, they can dodge it somewhat easily. So overall this commander is decent, but certainly not a must buy. Fortifications commander. Starting out we have heavy fortifications, stern pose can build tank traps, flak emplacements and trenches. None of these really see too much play. Field defenses, fox grenadiers can build minefields and bunkers. So yeah, this allows your fox grenadiers to build S mines, which is probably the strength of the commander, especially in like 1v1s. Put S mines on all the capture circles, makes it really hard for your opponent to cap territory. They have to send sweepers or tanks over there to crush them. Makes it really, really annoying. S mines everywhere, it's very strong. Can also build bunkers as well, which can be helpful in team games holding on to territory. Pack 43 can be awkward to use, but can surprise opponents. Good against heavy tanks. LFH, probably the most consistent of all the howitzers. Quite strong, but. Yeah, will die to off maps quite easily. Zeroing artillery, this is a really strong artillery strike. Covers a decent area, requires you to maintain sight of the area for it to be effective, and it ramps up slowly over time. So at the start, shells will come down really slowly, 
but if the opponent stays in the area, then the shells will just start hammering down. Good at countering like British emplacement formations and just rip right through them really fast. And good for area denial as well. Maybe you're trying to cap a VP in the late game, drop that down. The opponents can't really come into that area. So yeah, that does make this commander quite strong in team games. But yeah, not really that strong in 1v1, though the S mines can make it okay. But yeah, if you're a team game player, probably worth looking into. Overwatch commander, starting out, we have the Jagalai Infantry Squad. So this is kind of a unique squad, four-man squad, and you can upgrade them with a Sniper G43. And what that does is when the opposing squad is a model that drops below 75% health, if the G43 shoots at that, it can one-hit them. So that can be really effective, especially against snipers. You can like leave the Jaeger light in camo, wait for the sniper to reveal itself, go for a burst of fire, and hopefully you just like kill it instantly. Maybe like the car 98s connect, G43 finishes it off. So probably one of the best counters for snipers that OKW has, these Jaeger lights. And just a decent all-round squad, especially against Brits. The long range, they're quite good, so you can fight against the infantry sections quite well. You can go for like a three... Folks into Jaeger Light start, which can be quite good against Brits. Early warning systems, so this gives you bonus sight on your tech trucks if you want to put them out on the battlefield, which can be okay. Gives you access to the flare traps. You can plant these traps on capture circles, which when your opponent enters the circle, will pop a flare up so you can see what they're doing. They're for free, so they're all right. Don't see too much play though these days. And then you've got the Goliath. This is one of the highlights of the commander for the memers out there. Kind of like a walking demo charge. You can, uh, it's quite loud as it moves around quite slow. But you can maneuver into position, do huge damage, wipe squads, do a lot of damage to tanks. Really strong at wiping, but yeah, it can be hard to use. Costs quite a lot of munitions as well, 100. For the Fatherland, it's an okayish buff for your squads in friendly territory, but doesn't see too much play. Most players try and save their munitions for the Sector Assault, which you can see at the bottom there. It's probably one of the strongest abilities in the game. Anti-infantry planes, anti-tank planes, same as Stu Close Air Support for us here. So it's just a really strong one and quite a lot of planes as well. It takes a while to shoot down, which even in team games means that sometimes they can come in for a second pass where otherwise they would have already been shot down. So it's a really strong ability, especially in 1v1s where anti-air is kind of hard to come by. And then finally, you got the LFH there, which is, as I said, solid, probably the best of the houses, but just a solid option. So overall, this is probably the best commander in 1v1s at the moment, in my opinion, especially against Brits. Falls off a little bit in the larger team modes, as the planes can get shot down a lot more easily, but then you can maybe make up for that with the Goliaths. So yeah, probably the top buy for OKW. Scavenge, starting out, we've got the Flag Panzer, and this can be quite good for OKW, because their Panzer IV costs so much, the Flak Panzer will actually arrive so much earlier, and this can kind of allow you to hit some timings, which can be quite strong against the opponent. Thorough Salvage, this is kind of quite bad. Gives you some munitions when you salvage stuff. Uh, takes longer. Not that good. Bit of a waste of a command slot. Eagle Infantry, as I said earlier, very strong. Good at countering Brits, good at countering snipers. Very good. Infiltration Grenades. These are where each model on the squad throws one kind of weak grenade, but then all combined can lead to quite a lot of area covered, quite a lot of destructive force, very strong and actually quite cheap. 105mm howitzer barrage, this covers a relatively large area, a lot of scatter, a lot of like decently strong artillery shells landing, will do you know wipe infantry squads, do okay damage against tanks, but yeah it's, it's okay, nothing too special. So overall this commander is okay, certainly not a must buy, Maybe slightly more oriented towards our 1v1 than the larger team modes. Moving on to the British, we've got the Advanced Emplacements Commander. This allows you to lean quite heavily on the emplacements that the British have access to. Gives you uh, abilities to like repair them, they're more durable, stuff like that. But I'd say not really suitable for competitive multiplayer. Maybe more of a comp stomp commander. Probably wouldn't recommend picking this up. Mobile Assault Regiment. We've got flamethrowers that you can get on your Royal Engineers. This can be really helpful on some maps with a lot of buildings and a lot of cover. Advanced cover combat gives your infantry sections a buff, which is okay, but not incredible. But it's all right in this commander because you don't have that much to spend your munitions on. Filtration commandos. This is a three-man commando squad that can be spawned out of buildings, so good for going for flanks and stuff. But when they spawn, they uh, don't have access to the grenade. The grenade starts on cooldown. So if you want to go for a grenade, you're going to have to spawn them, then 
wait in camo for a bit, wait for their grenade to come off cooldown. But it can be uh, quite effective in going for cheeky flanks and ambushes and will reinforce back up to five models. So they will end up being a full strength commando squad. Land mattress, this is the only rocket artillery that the British forces have access to, only in this commander. And it's a little bit weak. Each individual rocket does like less than other rocket artillery pieces. So it's uh, not that good at wiping. This rockets come down over quite an extended period of time. So decent at area denial, but generally doesn't do that much damage. It's okay against like uh, maybe four bases. Maybe if you find a OKW tech truck and just constantly barrage it. Can be quite slow to maneuver though. It's not a uh, vehicle. It's kind of like infantry towing it around. So slow to reposition, which does make it somewhat vulnerable in that respect. But at the same time, it can also be decrewed then recruit. So can survive sometimes where other rocket artillery pieces wouldn't. So it's a bit of give and take, but overall not very strong. But if you really need rocket artillery, it'll do in a pinch. Vehicle crew repairs. This is a pretty good ability overall. Your tanks can repair themselves and uh, drop some smoke on them as well, which can be helpful sometimes. And uh, yeah, because you don't have too much else to spend your munitions on in this commander, you can kind of spam it and keep your tanks on the battlefield all the time. So overall, this is a decent commander, but certainly not a must buy. I think when it comes to artillery, I would prefer Royal Artillery, commander you get by default, but it's an okay commander and has historically been quite popular. Special Weapons Regiment. Starting out, we've got the Tank Hunter Infantry Section. So this is like an infantry section, comes with two boys AT rifles, kind of similar to a PTRS. Overall, the anti-infantry damage on these guys is kind of similar to a regular infantry section squad, but obviously you can't fire the boys AT rifles on the move, so a little bit less maneuverable. Also, you can't upgrade them with the healing, so it can kind of make it hard to heal these guys up, and they've got a really long cooldown, so if you want to call in multiple squads of them, it's uh, really hard to do, so overall not very strong, but they're not horrible. Resupply half-track, coming in at 4 CPs is quite late. Also, if you want to drop weapons with it, which it can do, it can drop Piets and Vickers. Vickers is like a slightly stronger brand, basically, but uh, slightly more expensive as well. 60 munitions versus 45. But yeah, you still have to tech weapon racks if you want to drop those, so uh, quite weak at that timing, I would say and not really that strong in combat. Hold the line, this ability is kind of bugged, it just almost never works, just a, basically a waste of munitions, no good. Concentrated fire operations, this is kind of like railway artillery for us there, but uh, more shells, more scatter. Decent at countering OKW trucks and static emplacements, but often doesn't really hit too much. And finally the crocodile, this is really strong, but if you're looking for the crocodile, you're probably better off going for a different commander such as Vanguard. Tactical Support Regiment, we've got the Field Recovery Sappers. So when you use this ability, some flares will pop up showing uh, all the vehicle wrecks on the map, which can be helpful for finding the wrecks. And the sappers themselves, they're kind of like slightly more expensive regular sappers, but they come equipped with the sweeper. They can salvage those vehicles. They won't give you much resources back though for that salvaging effort. In fact, some people even think it's bugged. <laughs> you get so little resources back. So they're okay, you can just call them in and see regular sappers and maybe get a bit, bit of value out of them with the salvage, but not a highlight of this commander. Designate command vehicle. Put this on a vehicle. It kind of makes the vehicle itself worse, but gives some nice boosts to nearby units. Also gives you access to like a recon plane, which can be quite helpful, especially in like a sniper war. Those recon planes will spot the enemy sniper, allowing you to get that counter snipe off. So it's a decent ability. Air resupply operation for pretty low prices. Airdrops in a mortar, AT gun and some medical crates, which I think have AOE healing. Uh, used to be quite popular where you'd airdrop them in for your Soviet teammate in a team game so they could have access to an AT gun if they've gone for tier one, which is uh, quite a nice opportunity to use this. And overall, it's pretty good value for money. It's an okay ability. Here we've got the crocodile, which is really strong. The flamethrower, quite durable, very good heavy tank. Forward observation post. So you can use this on an ambient building on the map. But by the time you get to 10 command points, most of those are probably flattened. So more likely you'll be upgrading a Ford assembly with this. And then it gives you access to a whole bunch of off-map artillery strikes, basically. You've got the artillery cover, which covers like a large area. Kind of just like a good area denial tool. will fire shells at tanks and suppress infantry, I believe. Also, if your vehicle is in there and starts to get low on health, it'll like put some covering smoke on them so it makes it easy to get away. Quite strong area denial tool, especially in the big team game modes, can be really helpful. Also gives you access to a bombing strike, uh, 
anti-infantry loiter plane. I think there's one other ability as well. So yeah, it's uh, pretty strong in team games. If you can be bothered putting up this thing, it can be hard to set up and they only have a limited cast range from the structure itself. You can't do it anywhere on the map. But yeah, it does make this commander pretty strong in team games overall. So worth a look if you're playing team games, I think. And last but not least, we've got Vanguard Operations. Starting out here, we've got Raid Operations. This allows you to cap territory more quickly. That's all right. Forward Logistics Glider. This is different to the glider in Commandos. This one you can actually use as a forward retreat point if you're ticked up high enough in your base structures. Uh, you can train Commandos from it. It doesn't come with Commandos in it, but you can train them. You can train AT guns from it, I believe it is, or maybe it's machine guns and medics. So a uh, pretty cool ability. can help you with uh, some forward territory control and can be quite helpful in team games using it as a forward retreat point on the cheap vehicle crew appears just a strong ability to, for keeping your tanks healthy crocodile really strong heavy tank and finally strafing support so there's like an anti-tank plane in this one and an anti-infantry plane very strong in 1v1 especially when these planes don't get shot down can be a real big x factor in a hectic engagement so overall i'd say this is the strongest of the commanders to purchase for 1v1 but still more popular in 1v1 as commandos and royal artillery so there you go guys, I hope you found that helpful, and until next time, goodbye, and good luck. A special thank you goes out to my Patreon backers, who make these more in-depth videos possible.